In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, you willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy. Grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's thumb, so that I may not, so that I may know how to reply to the wearied, he provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. No, I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be ashamed. My vindicator is your hand. Does anyone start proceedings against me? Then let us go to the court together. Who thinks he has a case against me? Let him approach me. The Lord is coming to my help. Who dares condemn me? Word of the Lord. Let our response be, in your great love, O Lord, Answer my prayer for your favor. Answer my prayer for your favor. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame covers my face, that I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. I burn with zeal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. Response, in your great love, O Lord, Answer my prayer for your favor. Taunts have broken my heart. I have reached the end of my strength. I looked in vain for compassion, for consolers. Not one could I find. For food, they gave me poison. In my thirst, 
they gave me vinegar to drink. Response, in your great love, O Lord, answer my prayer for your favor. I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God's seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his servants in their chains. Response, in your great love, O Lord, answer my prayer for your favor. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Son of Man is going to his fate, as the scriptures say he will, but alas for that man by whom he is betrayed. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, the man called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you prepared to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 silver pieces, and from that moment he looked for an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus to say, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go to so-and-so in the city, he replied, and say to him, the master says, my time is near. It is at your house that I am keeping Passover with my disciples. The disciples did what Jesus told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he was at table with the 12 disciples and they were eating and he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn, not I, Lord, surely. He answered, Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going to his fate, as the scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. Judas, who was to betray him, asked in his turn, Not I, Rabbi, surely. They are your own words, answered Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we meditate on the mystery of redemption during Holy Week. We meditate on the beginning of, if you will, the plot against Jesus, instigated by the betrayer, but always in a spirit of faith and in hope and in joy of our redemption. Today, we likewise meditate on the mystery of the message of Our Lady of Fatima, where our Blessed Mother appeared here at this place to ask the children to tell all to be people of prayer, to warn them about dangers and evils in the world, and in a special way, to pray to the Lord for peace and for the conversion of sinners. Today also we can think about one man who is associated with this message in a special way, St. John Paul II, whose papacy uh, had uh, such uh, a marvelous effect and, and who himself was such a holy man and was uh, tied to this mystery of Fatima. I'll tell you a personal story that I think relates. It was 2002, I believe, 
where St. John Paul II came to uh, Toronto, which is, would be his last World Youth Day. And I went there uh, with some fellow Dominicans and probably a million other people. And the culmination of World Youth Day is a mass with the Holy Father in this place on an airfield in Toronto. And a, a great number of the crowd had spent the night sleeping in the field after a beautiful vigil. We woke up to rain, which led up. Uh, and we thought everything was fine, and then the rain started again. And the rain turned into a tempest. It was great winds, it was pouring out. Uh, and the winds were so violent that uh, there was a light tower there that started to come apart. It was a little frightening. And those of us of little faith thought maybe they would cancel the mass. Our habits uh, were absolutely soaked right through. And, uh, Nonetheless, the Holy Father arrived and the Mass began. I can remember there were welcoming words by the Archbishop, the Cardinal of Toronto, and his chasuble was blowing in the wind, like he was uh, practically uh, struggling to stand up. And I still wondered what would happen. And then St. John Paul II started to speak. And uh, within a matter of moments, the wind died. The rain stopped and the sun came out. And I, I was impressed, I have to tell you. <laughs> that day, uh, later on, we would uh, uh, sort of uh, gingerly put our hands on our habits. And uh, several other Dominicans mentioned this to me. Likewise, they were dry. In a memoir, Cardinal Jeevish said, uh, his, the Pope's secretary at the time said that he had been warned to cancel the Mass, but had looked up in the sky and blessed the sky. It's something that reminds us of the miracle of Fatima on that October day when uh, uh, the children were here and great crowds gathered in this place and there was a great tempest and then all of a sudden uh, the uh, sun came out. Many saw the miracle of the sun and their clothes were miraculously dry. It was a, a blessing and a tremendous privilege to share, I believe, in that mystery of Fatima so many years later in a different continent and in a different uh, century. St. John Paul II was uh, closely connected to this mystery, as you know. Our Lady had warned about the errors of communistic uh, totalitarianism that was beginning in Russia at the time to pray uh, for the conversion of Russia, indeed, that it be consecrated, to pray for peace in the world. And there came in 1978 a pope from a communist country, someone who was a sign of faith, uh, someone who had a great devotion to the Blessed Mother, whose uh, papal shield had an M in it for Mary. In 1981, as you know, there was an assassination attempt on the Holy Father that turned out to be on the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima. And he attributed her intercession, uh, to her intercession, his survival that day. Indeed, he was grievously wounded, but would end up being a uh, pope for over two decades more. And finally, uh, he said, by the way, one hand fired the bullet and another guided it, meaning Our Lady. Finally, communism in the Eastern Bloc collapsed almost completely peacefully, with, high, with hardly any violence, beginning in his native Poland uh, with the solidarity movement that he was so close to, and culminating in a way with the fall of the Berlin Wall. And so we have uh, a segment of that wall here as a commemoration of the long decades of prayer, of patience, and of suffering that the uh, people in, of uh, the Eastern Bloc suffered and that uh, the world prayed about for so long. So we are now in Holy Week. Just as there are many setbacks in this journey towards uh, freedom, this journey towards faith in both the life of the Holy Father and of his people, so our Lord sets the pattern by undergoing the setback of one of his own friends betraying him. And yet we know that that betrayal sets in motion our redemption. So this is not a day 
Spy Wednesday, as it's often called, marking that one of the disciples, the apostles, had become a spy. This is not a day uh, in which we uh, simply uh, lament or curse or uh, complain, but rather it's a day when we uh, begin to reflect that our redemption came from this act of betrayal, from the evil that we've done to Jesus would come our salvation, that uh, the Lord would overcome all evil, no matter how, uh, how, no matter how dark it might have seemed. St. Thomas Aquinas says that God allows evil so that he may bring a greater good out of it. So that we know by our faith that whatever evil we suffer in ourselves, in our bodies, in our lives, our families, in the world, that God can bring a greater good out of this. It requires only the seed of our faith that we say yes to the Lord and yes to the mystery of redemption of the Lord's passion, death, and resurrection in our lives. So this Holy Week, let us pray. Let us pray for the conversion of sinners. Let us pray for peace in the world, for even though great things were done there in uh, the Eastern Bloc and the end of communism, the kingdom has not come completely, and we always need to pray for God's peace. Let us pray for uh, the growth of God's kingdom indeed in the world, for the, for the growth of uh, faith in Christ, for the truths of his church. And let us pray that we may enter this Paschal Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, with the joy of knowing that if we suffer with Christ, we will also rise with him. And confident in our Heavenly Father's love for us, we bring before him our needs and the needs of the whole world. For all the faithful, that by obeying the appeals of Mary in the spirit of true penance and prayer, they may work wholeheartedly for the renewal of the world and for the kingdom of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who exercise sacred ministry in the church, that they may be attentive to the word of God, love it and proclaim it with fidelity and enthusiasm as Mary did, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern nations, that they may work for justice and peace in the world and, harmon and harmoniously collaborate in the, just in the just distribution of earthly goods among all those inhabitants of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer, in that, that in union with Mary, consoler of the afflicted, and lo the loving care of others, that, we, that in the contemplation of the cross of Christ, they may find courage to face life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here present and for our families, that by the intercession of Mary, those who seek Christ may find him, sinners may be converted, young people may open their hearts with enthusiasm to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please hear these prayers, which we ask, confident in your great love, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received 
the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that celebrating your Son's passion and mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, <coughs> by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni Sunt Celi Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Antonio our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostle and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Endow us, almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death in time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Grant you are faithful, O Lord, we pray, to partake unceasingly of the Paschal mysteries and to await with longing the gifts to come that persevering in the sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Lenten works to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.